What up, YouTube? Here with the first ever episode of Talk Wrestling. That's right, I'm going to be adding another addition to this channel. I'm going to try and cover more wrestling on this channel as time goes. Um, You know, um, on, on, on this first ever episode of Talk Wrestling, uh, I'm going to be uh, talking about why I haven't really been tapping in to wrestling like that um, for, for the uh, last few years. Um, but I, I've recently been tapping back into wrestling, but y'all going to see why as, as I talk uh, on, on this episode on why, like, it's kind of hard to keep up, at least with the WWE, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, because y'all see the title of this video, um, I'm going to be covering a few topics on, on this first ever episode of Talk Wrestling, but... It says I'm I'm addressing you know the current state of the WWE right now and you know it, it, it you know for for the last few years it's been hard to you know tap into the sport I said sports sports entertainment WWE pro wrestling whatever you want to call it right um you know just life itself you know be you know having you busy and shit and that's why you know it's hard to keep up with everything that you once you know. Uh, was tapping into, but, you know, WWE, since I've been, you know, paying a little more attention to them, um, it's been like, I, I, there's been like, you know, a, a, a questionable state, I say WWE's, uh, been at, um, at least for the last few years, um, obviously ever since the pandemic struck, the WWE has been releasing, uh, a bunch of their talents I don't even think they have enough talent On their main roster right now To continue the brand split Hence why I think they unified The universe and the WWE title Which is currently held by Roman Reigns And then they talking about They're going to unify The tag team titles as well And I, I don't know um, It's either going to be RK Bro Or the Usos um, That goes to show you WWE uh, lacks in the tag team department and lacks when it comes to in depth roster. They got the, I say, like as far as the main roster goes, I'm gonna talk about NXT 2.0. I don't know why they had to add 2.0 to it, it's still NXT, but whatever. Anyways, yeah, um, they got the opposite of what AEW has right now. I think AEW currently has a problem with, you know, the in that roster that they got as of right now. They have way too much talent on their roster to, you know, uh uh have all their talent displayed on TV. That's why they have um AEW Dark and you know shows like that and Rampage. Rampage is on TNT, but you know it's an hour show, and you know as of late, Rampage has been you know drawn the lowest or lowest ratings that it's, it's ever had. Um, and yeah, um, as far as the current state of WWE goes, um, you have Roman Reigns, who's who's been unbelievable. His work ever since he came back, SummerSlam of 2020, and you know. He's, you know, with Paul Heyman and the Bloodline, I think their work is by far the best um, in WWE currently. I, you know, obviously Cody Rhodes came back at WrestleMania, and Cody Rhodes is one of the top performers uh, in the in the wrestling business. Um, and, you know, he's doing this thing, but I, I think Roman Reigns got it right now. And um, it, it's quite funny because um, Hell in a Cell which is the next pay-per-view event for the WWE, they don't have Roman Reigns advertised. Um, Roman Reigns said in the house show uh, in Trenton, New Jersey, before um, the WrestleMania Backlash pay-per-view, he says he'll know um, if, if he's going to come back and things like that. He had cut a promo saying, you know, um, basically hinting that he's going to be, you know, going away for, I don't know, who knows how long. It's rumored that... You know, after the summer, he's going to be uh, shooting a movie or, or a show or something like that. So he might be off TV. And I don't know if, if that's going to lead into the WWE having them lose the titles uh, come SummerSlam. But, you know, Roman Reigns, um, his, his, he's been champion ever since 2020. And his reign has just been looking. It, it, it's been booked great, I'd say, you know. 
Um, obviously, his his feud with Finn Balor was like you know kind of like what the heck, like what happened with that feud. Of course, he has immemorable feuds like that, and you know him versus um, Cesaro, who's no longer with the WWE anymore. I'm sure I think WWE wanted to keep Cesaro around. Obviously, you know I think WrestleMania 37, um, he he defeated um, Seth Rollins, who is one of the prominent figures currently active in the WWE right now so they were trying to push him they've been trying to push Cesaro but I guess Cesaro you know denied their you know a contract offer I guess he wasn't happy with how the WWE was booking them um you know I, I don't know where he's gonna go next but you know I heard he turned down a few contract offers from different promotions and things like that but you know and then his other feuds with another release uh talent former champions Bray Wyatt and Braun Strowman, who are both no longer with the WWE, both guys, you know, everybody especially loves Bray Wyatt, everybody, everybody, you know, ever since he uh, put on that Fiend gimmick, everybody been, you know, uh, appreciating his creativity and his character work, and for somebody of his size and stature, he's he, he could go in the ring, but you know, I, me personally, you know, I, I just bigged him up. But me personally, I've never been a fan of Bray Wyatt's character. Um, his in-ring ability, like I said, is impressive. His mic work, impressive. But as far as his character goes, like, he just couldn't get over with the majority of the crowd. Of course, with, you know, I hate to use the word, but Smarks, especially with, you know, he, he's been an internet darling. You know, a lot of people have been wondering, you know, where he gonna go, AEW, ROH, whatever, whatever, right? But... You know, um, he just could never get over with the with the crowd, and you can't say WWE didn't give Bray Wyatt a chance, didn't give Braun Strowman a chance. I know Braun Strowman, you know, he's got you know a little bit of heat when it comes to you know within the you know hardcore wrestling fan base, and you know both guys, like I said, like before uh, they got released, they were main eventing WrestleManias and pay per views with champions and. You know, they had a few with Roman Reigns, and after their few with Roman Reigns, they both got released. Well, not not uh, Braun Strowman, because he stayed around till like, WrestleMania 37, and then after that, uh, he got released. And, you know, you can't say WWE didn't give Bray Wyatt his proper push, because he was, he reached the... Um, the the pinnacle and he got the brass ring he just couldn't you know uh run with it and you know i don't know i guess you know wwe lost steam with him you know and yeah roman reigns like i said those feuds were like man right and then his feuds with what's his name um kevin owens daniel bryan edge and then i don't know what happened with him and seth Rollins' feud when they were feuding for the universal title Back in Royal Rumble of this year, they forgot all about that, which was a match that Seth Rollins never lost. But, you know, WWE tends to do that. Like, look what they're doing with Bobby Lashley. He never lost, never got pinned, he never tapped out for his WWE title. Instead of him going for the title he never lost, he gets stuck in a feud with Omos. I'm not saying that's a bad feud at all. Like, you know, I think, you know... Um, I think Bobby Lashley's in his 40s. I don't know how Oma, how old Omos is. I think he got to be like in his 30s or something like that. But, you know, I guess he's trying to push him as like this, you know, colossal giant that he is. I guess, you know, they had, you know, feeling like a big show, great Kali shoes. Even though I think, you know, when it comes to his in-ring ability, this ain't no diss. But he reminds me more of great Kali when it comes to, you know, his performance in the ring rather than, you know, somebody like a big show. But yeah, I think, you know, him, Omas having MVP by his side is a good thing, you know, but a lot of the, you know, booking that the WWE has been doing as of late just hasn't been making no sense. Um, and that has me questioning not only the current state of the WWE, but definitely the future of the WWE. Um, that's why I bring up guys like that. Like I said, what they're doing with Roman Reigns is a great thing. Um, um, and ever since he came back, he, he's never lost his momentum. He just keeps going and going. G.O.D. mode, I think that's the you know best way to you know say it. Greatness on a different level. That's what Roman Reigns has been putting on uh, ever since he came back. Um, I think he's been booked right, regardless of all the you know bad feuds that he had that I already named. Um, yeah. Um, other than that, I think you know other than him, Cody Rhodes, and Seth Rollins. 
Um, I think it's you know WWE has been lacking when it comes to they 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 shows and their booking. Like WrestleMania 38 was a fun event. It had a lot of you know celebrity appearances and you know guest matches. You know, uh, but after those celebrities go away at the WrestleMania, those part timers go away at the WrestleMania. How do y'all you know keep you know y'all shows interesting? You know, y'all look at how Backlash was booked. Bianca Belair wasn't on the show. She's the Raw Women's Champion. Why her and Becky Lynch didn't have a rematch like Charlotte and Ronda did? You know? Like, that goes to show. Are they going to unify the women's title next if they're not going to have a brand split? What's going on? Theory beat Finn Balor for the U.S. title. I thought that would bring more attention to the to the U.S. title. WWE just stopped giving a fuck about the mid-card scene. Ricochet, the Intercontinental Champion, wasn't at WrestleMania. Neither was Finn Balor, and he was a U.S. champion at WrestleMania, right? And then you have, um, what do you call it, the Intercontinental title. That title hasn't been defended since last year's WrestleMania. And those, those two titles, U.S. and the Intercontinental titles, are one of the most prestigious titles in WWE history. You know? Like, those are titles. Titles are supposed to mean something. I know it's a different generation, but still, titles are supposed to mean something, and I, I strongly believe that. And um, the way they've been booking their mid-card scene is terrible. I think the, the NXT North American title holds more prestige than the Intercontinental and U.S. titles as of right now. That's for sure. They got more relevancy, and they got more attention on the North American title over there in the NXT programs than the Raws and SmackDowns with their mid-cards. And that's, that's not good. And then to only have six matches on, on your pay-per-view, I don't know. I guess they timed it right, but, you know, I, I think they're just not booking things right, in my opinion. Um, and then and then it's just a lot of confusion when it comes to this whole brand split thing. You had Lacey Evans, right, had her comeback vignettes displayed on SmackDown, but apparently now she's getting moved over to Monday Night Raw. I don't know what's going on with that. And then um, you have, um, uh, what's his name, uh, Mustafa Ali who came back. I don't know if he's hunting for the U.S. title. I don't know if he's feuding with The Miz, not not Theory for the U.S. title. I thought, that, you know, Theory and Miz, you know, uh, they, they had a segment with Mustafa Ali when Ali came back. And, you know, that kind of, you know... Gave good signs that they were going to bring some kind of relevancy to the U.S. title. But I guess they're going to run with the Miz feuding with Mustafa Ali. And Tommaso Ciampa, who was one of the faces uh, in NXT during his heydays, he made uh, his uh, uh, move up to the main roster after WrestleMania. Then um, he's been attacking Mustafa Ali ever since Ali came back. Then he had, you know... A match with Mustafa Ali with The Miz as a special guest referee last week on Raw. And he got the job of treatment. I mean, he was barely getting no offense. Like, he just dared to be there to hype up the feud with Miz and Mustafa Ali. Like, like, <laughs> are they going to release uh, Chiampa? I don't think so if they just moved him up to the main roster. But I heard his contract is up in June. But, you know, the, is he on his way out the door? Like... Johnny Gargano who was you know his main rival you know that was like his like you know those two were like the go-to guys in NXT during his heydays Gargano's been out the WWE for as long as he has been Ciampa the way he's getting treated he, he just dared to be there and then Kevin Owens he had his segment with Stone Cold Steve Austin of course that was you know I'm sure he he, he liked the way that shit was booked he he got in there, had a moment with his, you know, childhood hero, Steve Austin. That was a fun segment. And then now he's feuding with Ezekiel, which is Elias' younger brother. And obviously that gimmick is, you know, kind of like whatever. Like it's, it's stupid, but, you know, it's, it's kind of funny. I get it, whatever. But somebody of a Kevin Owens caliber feuding with that, I just don't see Ezekiel, you know, I understand they're trying to push him, I just don't see Ezekiel really gaining much momentum, the way the feud is being booked, uh, it's not bad, it's not bad, but I think Kevin Owens deserves more, Eze like the storyline is just, man, you get what I'm saying, like I get the comedic purposes, Kevin Owens plays that role very well, I think they're both playing off the, you know, feud, you know, better than, you know, what is what what it is, 
But then it's just like a lot of the programs that that's 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 currently on with the WWE right now just lackluster. And then you have Edge's new group, right? Damian Priest, who they weren't doing nothing with. It looked like he was going to feud with Finn Balor, but then, you know, that was short-lived. And he forgot about the U.S. title after Finn Balor won it off him. He joined Edge's uh, a new group called Judgment Day. You know, they got like this dark gothic uh, gimmick. And they added Rhea Ripley. She fits in perfectly with that with that group. Um, I think Edge being, I, he wants to compete as a full-time competitor. He's in great shape, obviously, you know, after retiring and, you know, having the amounts of injuries that he suffered throughout his career, the way he's been performing ever since he came back as an in-ring competitor, unbelievable. But, you know, I think, you know, if he wants to compete full-time, go ahead. I want to suggest that, but I think, you know, him taking on the mentor role, mentor role for Rhea Ripley and, uh, Damian Priest, I think that would be a good look for Edge rather than, you know, getting in there as a full-time competitor. And I heard they're going to be adding another, you know, male member to that faction. I, I heard it's rumored to be Chiampa through the dirt sheets. I think he would be a good fit with that group as well. Him and Damian Priest could form a tag team. I think this is a powerful group to be in the WWE. Now, Edge, you know, he's had dark gimmicks before, before he became rated R superstar and all that, like before Edge and Christian, Edge and Christian were in the brood and the ministry of darkness. So he's had, you know, played characters like this before. And he's got, you know, the superstars uh, in his group that, that, you know, fits right in that group. And, you know, um, inside, you know, the, the, I think, you know, they've been booked, right? That's another program in the WWE that's, you know, currently good right now. It's not all bad. And, you know, the fact that, you know, he's, you know, pushing... Damien Priest and Rhea Ripley. Damien Priest, I know, is a little old, but Rhea Ripley, she's more younger and fresher. And to have somebody like her under his guidance and Damien Priest, you know, who's made a splash in the indie scene and NXT and now he's on WWE, he had his moment. You know, he had that celebrity match last year at WrestleMania, but he was completely off the card for this year's WrestleMania other than his interference on the match uh, between AJ Styles and Edge. Um, I think, you know, this could catapult him into, you know, uh, reaching his uh, full potential uh, in the WWE. Somebody like, a great like Edge, you know, by, by their side, you know, they could only, you know, uh, go to the top unless, you know, they, unless they fuck up, right? Part of my language. Um, but, you know, other than that stupid little moment that Damian Priest had versus uh, AJ Styles on Raw where he did that stupid little creepy look with the lights out, like... That, that was stupid, but other than that, you know, they've been booked right. Um, and as far as um, and any other talents go uh, currently in the WWE, I, I like RK Bro versus the Usos, you know, but, you know, they, they, they're lacking in the tag team department, so they got to do that. Um, but, yeah, RK Bro, you know, I think Randy Orton is having the most fun he, he's ever had in his career with his run with... Uh, uh, Matt Riddle and you know I think uh, their tag team um, um, has been putting in great work and um, yeah um, Riddle you know that's that's a guy that that has potential to be like the future of the WWE he's well over with the crowd um, he's a likable guy um, friendly character and you know um, yeah like the can't call his character corny, you know, a lot of people might say, that's like the best, like, PG character you could have, like, you know what I'm saying, like, and WWE has gone less PG, you know, as, as time progresses, and I think, you know, uh, Riddle's character, like, fits right in there with, like, this generation, and I think a lot of people, the WWE universe, right, could really resonate with him, I think he's, like, gonna be, like, the future top guy, in, in the WWE, maybe after Roman Reigns, because I think Roman Reigns is heading towards uh, his cousin, The Rock, and, you know, uh, former head honcho of the WWE, John Cena's route, and, you know, going to Hollywood after um, his wrestling career. Obviously, you know, he's not going to be doing this forever. He's had to take time off due to health reasons and all that stuff as well. So I think Roman Reigns is, like, in this transitional moment where, you know, He's on top right now, like he's on top of his game, he's running things in the WWE, but he's, you know, slowly teasing his way out. I think he's hinting that he's going that 
the Rock, Dwayne Johnson, John Cena route. Um, but I think Riddle, you know, could fit right in there after Roman Reigns as that top guy. Him, Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes is a little bit up there in age. And then you also have Theory, who's who's very young, who's in his 20s. I think he could be like the future Miz, um, the way he presents himself. And he could go in the ring as well. Then you also have, um, you know, um, what's his name? Gabe Stevenson. I don't know how he's going to perform in the ring. I don't think, you know, there's only one Kurt Angle. Um, he's going to be the second ever Olympic gold medalist in WWE. He had that moment at WrestleMania with, you know, fellow Olympian uh, Chad Gable. Um, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know how uh, Gabe Stevenson is going to do. I don't know how his uh, charisma is, how his uh, uh, mic work is, how his in-ring ability is. He's got the athleticism. He's an Olympic gold medalist. But as a pro wrestler, I don't know how he's going to do in the WWE. So I can't say, you know, I'm going to put, you know, the future... On his back, but I'm sure WWE wants to, you know, catapult Stevenson into a, a, a superstar. You know, hopefully reaching or accomplishing as much as Kurt Angle once did. You know, the gold medalist, they got high hopes on him. He's a recognizable name, right? And then, um, who else could be the future of the WWE? Theory's being booked, right, as like this McMahon, like, other than the selfie character, but that goes with the snobbish character. I get it. Um, but yeah, um, you know, with being McMahon's, you know, handpicked guy like Drew McIntyre once was. But, you know, I think Theory's not going to get that, you know, trials and tribulations that Drew McIntyre went through of, you know, being in the 3MB, then getting released. Then going back to NXT, then doing his thing in NXT, then, you know, getting back onto the main roster, then winning the the WWE title and becoming, you know, the headliner for WrestleMania, beating Brock Lesnar, like, and Drew McIntyre, you know, he already reached that uh, pinnacle of getting the brass ring, he just got to keep on with the momentum, he had that six-man tag team match with the bloodline, uh, where he teamed with RK Bro, they lost that match. That was a good match. Like WWE or on their pay per view events, they put on good quality matches. It's just the booking where it's it, it's it, it don't it don't make no sense. You get what I'm saying? I don't know if they gonna push Omos as one of the you know prominent guys in the near future in the WWE. I think they gonna use him and Veer as like the giants, you know, in the WWE. But I don't know, as MVP, as his mouthpiece, and as his manager, I think, you know, anybody under MVP's guidance could, you know, reach where Bobby Lashley reached to. Um, so, yeah, Omos got to be in that convo as well. I'm talking about the current roster of the WWE and the main roster. I'm talking about NXT. I'm, I'm going I'm to get on that in a little bit. Um, then, then, you know, as far as the women's roster goes, you have uh, Raquel Rodriguez. She put on a good match with uh, Ronda Rousey. You know, she had a titled match, and she just made it to the main roster. And, yeah, um, she, she, could, she, she could be a potential future uh, woman's uh, superstar. Her, then you have um, uh, Bailey's already, you know, she, when she comes back, she's already been champion and all that. So, you know, I can't say she's the future because she's the current, right? Then you have um, Rhea Ripley, Liv Morgan, um, yeah, th those girls could go as well. You know, I'm sure they want to build um, something around them. I don't know how they're going to book Alexa Bliss, who came back recently as well. Um, she still got that, like, Bray Wyatt ripoff character. But she was fine the way she was before um, she made that alliance with Bray Wyatt. I don't know why she don't go back to, you know, her character. I guess WWE, you know, wanted to run with that whole crazy cycle character. I don't see why they continue with that. Bray Wyatt's no longer there anymore. So, yeah. Um, but she's already reached the pinnacle. So, I can't see the... You know, she's going to be the future of uh, WWE Women's roster. But that leads me right into NXT, right? NXT 2.0. Like, I get it. They moved to a new date because they were losing that Wednesday night ratings war versus Dynamite. Um, they moved to Tuesdays. And... They changed their whole logo, their arena. Their arena's cool. I don't, I don't mess with the logo. But, you know, their product is like WWE when they were losing the ratings war versus WCW Monday Night Nitro. Like, with all these, like, different characters, you have a woman that's playing as, like, a grown baby. 
then you have Battle of the Asses with Nikita Leons, and I forgot I forgot the other girl's name, but yeah, you have that. Then you have, the, the Toxic Attraction fits with this generation. Mandy Rose, like she's also going to be a, a key figure when it comes to women's wrestling in the future. I say that right now. And um, what's her name? The former ROH Women's Champion. She just made it to the NXT roster, and she's doing a thing. She she's going to play a key figure. In, in the future for women's wrestling over there in the WWE. And I say this right now. Women's wrestling, you know, there's no comparison. WWE got it when it comes to women's wrestling. AEW, you know, they lack in that department. They got a few talent, but WWE got it for the women's uh, division. And just the booking that's been off. And NXT, the character work. You got, like, John Gacy, who's playing, like, this, like, serial killer character. And it's like they, they, they bring in on all these like like different ass characters, like like weird characters from like back in the days, like Doink the Clown, Brooklyn Brawler, like the Turkey Man, like all these kind of like like bigger than life characters on NXT two point Like I could appreciate the nostalgic part of it, but then it's like eh. But I like what they doing with um um what's his name? Braun Breaker. You know, he's definitely going to be one of the key players in the WWE in the future. He's athletic. I think he got the charisma. He got the looks. Um, and, and, you know, he's obviously got the famous Stein, the last name. But he's not, you know, branding himself off that. And I could respect that. You know, they try to do that with um, Curtis Axel, Mr. Perfect Son. But, you know, uh, that ain't worked out. But I think Braun Breaker, they going to, you know... Uh, do what they were supposed to do with Mr. Perfect Son, Michael McGillicuddy, Kurt Axel, whatever you want to call them. They gave him a different name from, you know, his family name to work under. But he's doing his thing, though. He was doing his thing uh, leading up to WrestleMania on Raw, and he's holding down NXT 2.0 right now. Carmelo Hayes, obviously, he's athletic, char charismatic, could talk. Um, Solo uh, Sakaya, the younger brother, the Usos. Um, he could go, he got charisma, he could talk as well. Cameron Grimes, he doing his thing as well. Um, they got some good, solid um, talent over there in NXT 2.0. It feels more like a developmental stage, which is what it's supposed to be rather than the third brand. So I could appreciate that, just like the, the character work is like, what the heck is going on? Like the Creed brothers, and then you got um, what's the what's their name? The and the former NXT UK Tag Team Champions, pretty deadly as well. Um, I ain't gonna go into all that, but like as far as a character, but yeah, um, you got those guys, the tag team. You know they're bringing over, you know, tag teams on the main roster or talents from the main roster period to go over to NXT to work with the up and coming guys over there and girls over there, but you know, um. Yeah, it feels more like a developmental stage. And you got Santos Escobar, his group, Tony D'Angelo and his group. Like, the booking over there, it makes them... And I'll say this, though, about NXT 2.0. The characters is, like, not good, like, as far as the shitty characters that I named. And I'm sure y'all could, you know, key out what the shitty characters is and what the what the good characters is in NXT. Um, you know, the feuds, the bookings... It makes more sense over there in NXT than the main rosters. I, I say that much. Um, and yeah, like, like Backlash, it made no sense. Like, you had the six-man tag team match. It wasn't for the any of the titles. Like, you had Drew McIntyre making the save with for RK Bro versus the Bloodline. He didn't challenge for the Universal title. Like, yeah, I remember, I think it was, like, Legacy versus, like, Triple H and the McMahons. And it was for, like, all the titles or the WWE title, at least, when they were feuding. And that was that backlash, like, in 09. And for the, for this year's WrestleMania backlash, it was a regular six-man tag team match. Great match. Fun match. But it, it, it had no implications to it. No titles on the line. No nothing. And they were uh, promoting the uh, undisputed tag team title belt between... The Usos and RK Bro, but whatever. That's for next week's uh, SmackDown. I'm sure that's gonna lead into you know their pay per view match. I don't think the champion's gonna be crowned. The way WWE book things, you know, I could kind of like predict it. You know, not saying it's gonna be right, but you know, I I'm just saying though. Um, then you have what's the name Shinsuke Nakamura, right? Who Rick Boogs got injured like no kayfabe. 
he got injured during the WrestleMania match with Nakamura and him versus the Usos. And obviously Shinsuke, you know, stuck up for his partner trying to get his get back. And then the Usos kicked him in the face. And he never tried. He said he's going to go after Roman Reigns, but he hasn't. You know what I'm saying? Like, challenge for the Universal title. Like, what happened to that feud? Most people, including myself, thought that that was the next feud in mind. And I'm sure they could put on a good match. Even though Shinsuke hasn't been booked right, like, you know, as of late, like, you know, like, ever since, I think he's never even won a match at WrestleMania. Like, he won the Royal Rumble. He had that good first year run where he beat John Cena, won the Royal Rumble, challenged for the WWE title at WrestleMania. Ever since then, like, his first two years were good. Then after that, he just got lost in the in, in the mix. And um, Mad Cat Moss and Happy Corbin, right? The regular cliche wrestling storyline, two former buddies get into it. You know, Mad Cat Moss won the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal before he was Happy Corbin's uh, comedian, personal comedian. He was competing for the 24-7 title. Then he went back down to NXT. Then he, like, broke the record for the combines uh, over there in the developmentals. And then that's why they're trying to push him to the top. He got the physique. He, he, he just needs to rebrand and repackage himself. Like, a whole new character, a whole new attire, a whole new... Uh, Attitude, I guess it's going to lead into that, hopefully, because, you know, he got written off TV last night on, on SmackDown when Happy Corbin attacked him with the, with the trophy and the chair. Um, hopefully, that's going to lead him into, you know, having, you know, uh, work on his character, re-debuting himself, because he got potential. He got the looks, he got the physique, he got the athleticism. He could go in the ring as well. Obviously, WWE sees potential in him to be one of the major players in the some in, in, in the near future. Um, but yeah, for him to get, you know, I'm not saying he could still be a funny guy, but you know, to be a, 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 a top guy in, in WWE or wrestling period, you, you need to be taken seriously. And I think, you know, his character needs work to be taken seriously. And I, I, that's, that's all I'm saying. But that could be another, you know, future major player in the WWE. So yeah, um, that that's my take on the current state of the WWE, and who, you know, I I just thought that you know these were in my thoughts as far as you know the, the WWE and their product goes right now. Y'all let me know what y'all opinions is as far as um how how y'all seeing the WWE and, and their programs right now. Anyways, um, moving along to the next topic, I'm gonna be talking about AEW and their Owen Hart Cup tournament. Um, the eight man, eight woman tournament. Who y'all think the Joker is gonna be on uh, the man side and the woman side? You got Samoa Joe, who's scheduled to face the Joker of the tournament. It's rumored it could be Cesaro, could be the returning Miro. Who y'all think is gonna be the Joker? You had Adam Cole. Defeating Dax Hardwood, making him tap out to the sharpshooter um, uh, this past week over on Dynamite. And um, Darby Allen, he lost to Jeff Hardy. That was a fuck. That was a fucking great match. That was a fun match. Those who getting in there, um, you know, in the anything goes match, it was bound to be a fun, entertaining match. Um, Jeff Hardy, who um, actually got in the ring with Owen Hart um, during their time in the WWE back in the 90s. Um, I think that's why they put Jeff Hardy over Darby Allin because, you know, I think Darby Allin should have gone over Jeff Hardy in that match because Darby Allin's the homegrown talent, the younger talent. I think, you know, it's more important to invest into your future talent rather than a legend like Jeff Hardy. But I think it's because Jeff Hardy had that match with Owen Hart uh, before. I think that's why, you know, they probably had him go over uh, in that match. So it's going to be Jeff Hardy versus Adam Cole in the semifinals. And then next week on Dynamite, we're going to see who the Joker of the tournament is. Um, and then Dr. Britt Baker, who I think is the best uh, woman talent uh, in AEW, she's going to be facing the Joker for the women's division, the women's Owen Hart Cup tournament. Who y'all think is going to be? Y'all think it's going to be uh, Amber Moon? Obviously, you know, um, she's been uh, at a wrestling. I don't know if she's been wrestling at other promotions, but um, she's rumored to, you know, uh, 
come to the AEW roster. She's going to be a good addition to uh, the AEW women's roster. It's growing, obviously. Um, they're not, like I said, they're not messing with the WWE when it comes to women's wrestling. Um, Amber Moon, will she join, you know, uh, Tony Storm, a former NXT WWE talent. You know, they both were making some splashes uh, over there in NXT during their run. Uh, when they were with them, but now, you know, will she join Tony Storm in AEW? Or do y'all think it's going to be Mia Yim? Because I heard she's uh, in Impact Wrestling now, but I don't know. You got, um, I think um, that's that's Keith Lee's wife, right? And, you know, Keith Lee's with AEW. Will it be Mia Yim? Is she the Joker of the uh, Women's Owen Hard Cup Tournament? Or is it Ember Moon? I think it's going to be Ember Moon. Um, I don't know who else could it be. I don't know who who's rumored to be the wild card of that tournament. Um, and as far as the men go, I heard Cesaro. He's chilling at home. He's you know been turning down uh, contract offers from multiple of promotions. So I don't I don't think it's gonna be him. It might be Miro. Um, Miro's been off TV due to an injury, but he's got a lengthy contract with AEW. And um, the reason why, I think he's been cleared already to get back in the ring. But the reason why he hasn't been uh, uh, on air is because the AEW creative don't have nothing for him. Um, but I think, you know, um, this would be the best way for him to uh, come back um, as the wild card of the tournament. I think, you know, he could come back either as a baby face. Um, I think... It's going to be a baby face because I think, I'm predicting it right now, Samoa Joe, I think, is going to lose to the wild card, the joker of the Owen Hart Cup tournament because Jay Lethal and, and his camp is going to interfere in that match and I, that's going to further build the feud between Lethal and Joe. And um, Miro, you know, um, I think should be booked as a baby face because I think Ray Phoenix will go over Kyle O'Reilly uh, in their match for the tournament. So, yeah, um, I'm predicting it's going to be Miro. That's my predictions. Miro's the joker of the men's tournament uh, for the Owen Hart Cup. And Ember Moon, that's who I'm going to go with for the women's uh, joker, the wild card of the Owen Hart Cup tournament on the women's part. But, yeah, um, that that's what I wanted to talk about as far as AEW and the uh, Owen Hart Cup. Um, as far as their product goes, like... Um, <laughs> I don't know, man. I think they just got too too many people on their roster. Like they they have way too many acquisitions that they picked up. A lot of free agents that they picked up. If y'all go listen to um Swerve's podcast where he had Tony Khan on his show, Tony Khan let it be known that he's not trying to grow homegrown talent. He's trying to sign already established wrestlers, whether you know they're on the independent circuit or has already made uh, has already made a splash over there in WWE. He, I'm saying he, he's trying to build a a brand, a wrestling company, off of already recognizable names in the industry, which is not that bad, you know. Uh, the, the homegrown talent, they're not doing, they don't have the developmental stages like the WWE. They, they just got their, they just got their feet wet. The WWE has been around uh, before, before us type shit. I don't know how old whoever viewing this is, but, you know, they've been around for a long time. Um, AEW is just starting up. And, you know, uh, hopefully they get to the stages where, um, they could create developmental stages for guys, you know, that, that want to be wrestlers. Um, but you you have, you know, I, I got in tune with wrestlers that I've never heard of ever before. Like I said, I've been tapped out of, of pro wrestling for, for a while until as of recently. Um, but, you know, because AEW came onto the scene, I would say rather as an alternative because a lot of people, you know, miss the heydays of pro wrestling, the golden era, or rather, you know, the attitude era and the, and the NWO era where the WCW and WWE were feuding. You know, even, even when Impact, TNA was trying to go at it with Monday Night Raw, with the Monday Night Wars, people were, you know, kind of excited for that, but... I don't think they possess the same, you know, kind of, um, um, I don't want to say threat because I don't, th this is the whole point I'm trying to make. I don't like the whole 
competition that they try and make with you know different wrestling companies. They always try and look for the next big threat to the WWE. Instead, you know, we could look at AEW like an alternative. That's how I look at it. Um, and AEW, I think, you know, if they keep growing and they could, you know, start building actual homegrown talent with, you know, uh, want to be wrestlers, um, then they could, you know, I'm not saying they could be competitors, but they would be more of a legit alternative than they already are. And, you know, um, when it comes to their product, I think it's booked better, but it's kind of hard to maintain their booking, I say. And AEW, the way they book shit sometimes be so random that it's like, like it's hard to keep up with and it's pandemonious. And, and WWE is more, I'm not going to say organized, but AEW is unorganized with their booking. It's just like... Uh, a, a different announcements there, different announcements here, random matches here, random title matches there. Like, you know, they try and give it more of a sporty feel, and their booking, you know, it, it's kind of hard to, you know, maintain because the in depth roster that they got. And, you know, I, I think they should shrink that down. They're making more, you know, cuts, they're releasing more talent, they're cutting more talent. Um, out of their roster, you know, obviously not no prominent figures has been released from AEW yet, but yeah, as far as, you know, the main storylines go, like, you look at JAS and Eddie Kingston and PMP Few, that, that, that's, that, that makes sense, I, I like how they going with, with that program right there, then you have on um, the TNT title feud, I, you know, a lot of people are saying TNT title is becoming a joke, um, it's having too many, you know, uh, uh switches, uh, too, too, uh, uh, too quickly is what I'm saying. Like, you know, Scorpio Sky and Sammy Guevara has been having that back and forth for the TNT belt. Um, but I like that feud. I like the little switcheroo that they did, but I don't know if they're going to stick with that switcheroo because it looked at like, um, Scorpio Sky was going to turn babyface. But if y'all saw Rampage, um, last night, um, you guys saw Scorpio Sky, turned heel again um he beat frankie kazarian to retain his tnt title but it's because dan lambert and ethan page got involved ethan page hit kazarian over uh with the tnt title and then scorpio sky hit his finishing move and retained his title then frankie kazarian tried to tell him yo like your man's over there interfered and that's why you won the match and scorpio sky sold it like oh he was you know mad with his team but then you know um he chose a side and and he he turned on kazarian remember socal and Censor were the first ever aew tag team champions so you know this feud i think is gonna lead to sammy guevara maybe turning babyface with the help of uh, kazarian on his side because if y'all saw dynamite guevara told um kazarian like yo you can't trust scorpio sky he was ranked side and whatever whatever and I think they gonna build a feud off of that, but I like I, I like how Kazar I like that the switcheroo that that they did with Kazarian I said Kazarian with Guevara and Scorpio Sky, but I don't think they gonna stick with that switcheroo. So if they you know continue on with the way how you know it was before with Sky and Guevara, I don't want to see that. But yeah, um, and and then the Hangman page. And CM Punk, okay, this is what I mean by the sporty feel that the AEW is adding to their show, right? Like, they keep a track of their records, um, the win and loss records, as if this is UFC or pro boxing, right? Um, and then they have the ranking system as well for contenders for the titles. CM Punk's ranked number one. He's only at one defeat, and he's on a high streak, right? And, you know, they build in a feud around that. That was like... Uh, Page's mandatory challenger was CM Punk, and they got a match at Double or Nothing. I'm looking forward to it. I think both guys could go in the ring. I know Hangman Page gets, you know, a lot of criticism from what I've seen. You know, they're saying, oh, ever since he became champion, AEW Dynamite, AEW period, has been drawing the lowest ratings it's ever been drawing. Is that really his fault, or is it the whole show? What's the key highlight of AEW right now? Is it... Blackpool Combat Club, you know, they getting into the mix with JAS, helping out Eddie Kingston and PNP, right? Obviously, John Moxley, Brian Danielson, those guys are accomplished names. 
one of the most recognizable names in, in the industry right now. Same for Chris Jericho. Definitely up there in the argument for being the GOAT when it comes to pro wrestling. And yeah, I, I'm looking forward to their program as well. But that's just too many too many people involved. And AEW's got like this New Japan ROH kind of feel. I don't, not, let me not say ROH. Let me not speak on ROH too much. But definitely like New Japan. Because ROH, I don't think, has, you know, all these... Stables uh, uh, in the roster, but AEW is kind of like divided with like all these groups and factions, right? And you know, it be like ever since it's ever since it's beginning, that's how AEW uh, has been been doing shit. As far as you know, all the roster, it's not like they. That's what I mean, like by New Japan, like it's it's kind of similar to like New Japan, like New Japan has like groups and associates, like wrestlers that 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 rock with each other, but then they don't interfere. All the time. That's like the kind of feel that AEW has. It's like the AEW. I say is like the best alternative because it's like the perfect balance with like sports and entertainment. They add both that element of that pure pro wrestling, and then they got you know some of the entertainment values as well with guys like you know JAS and um, I, I liked what they were doing when Kenny Omega was the AEW champion. I think that's no Chris Jericho when he was a champion. That was when AEW was drawn the highest ratings but yeah um you know um they had that entertainment feel to it as well it's not like purely like uh uh new japan or roh but you know like look at kenny omega he was one of the most accomplished wrestlers in in the recent times to come out of new japan right and then look what they were doing with don Callis and the elite um kenny omega was uh uh looking like a sports entertainer not in ring obviously but his character work while he was a champion then you also have undisputed elite the bucks are great entertainers great you know uh characters when it comes to you know playing the heel and then obviously undisputed era they're missing roger strong who <clears throat> is you know uh, asking for a release from his contract with the wwe i don't know if he's going to join you know adam cole o'reilly and fish to you know, complete that undisputed era, but you know they were doing their thing on NXT, and you know they add that value as well. So it's like the perfect mixture. It's just their booking is messy, is because of their in-depth roster. There's just too many talent on the roster, which leads me into the next topic, and that's when Tony Khan announced, like, was it last month or two months ago or something like that? He announced that he bought ROH. Right? Did he buy it for vault reasons, like for library reasons? Um, because ROH obviously has had, you know, numerous uh, memorable events that uh, wrestling fans uh, will hold dearly to them um, because they put on some of the best pure wrestling matches in wrestling history. And, you know, a lot of AEW guys that are on top right now, they came under the ranks through ROH. Um, and they're... they're implementing ROH titles to today's shows now Jonathan Gresham he's injured right now that's the current world champion for ROH he had uh, made his AEW debut on the Battle of the Belts um but he's injured right now um I'm sure when he comes back he's gonna you know uh play a role in that is ROH going to have its own weekly show because I think AEW, if anybody could use a brand split, it's not WWE right now, it's, uh, it's AEW. They could even do a whole brand split with uh, Dynamite and Rampage if they wanted to. If uh, TNT would allow a two-hour slot for Rampage, but you know the way it's been drawn... Uh, I don't think a TNT will want to do that. And also, you know, it's the playoffs right now. Um, and TNT broad has the broadcasting rights to the NBA playoffs um, all the way up into the finals. Um, and then uh, the NHL playoffs as well is on TBS. That's not affecting um, Wednesday Night Dynamite at all. But as far as Rampage goes, I don't think TNT wants to give them a two-hour slot. I think that's just like an alternative to Dynamite. Like, you know, if their main talent wasn't... Uh, aired on um, Dynamite, they would have, you know, whatever other top talent uh, broadcasted on Rampage if they weren't on TV on Wednesday night, right? And then, y'all know AEW had, Tony Khan had signed a, um, a deal uh, with the HBO Max streaming service app. You know, is is that a sign? I don't know, I don't have HBO Max personally, so I don't know how AEW 
is 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 being uh, aired there. Um, will ROH be a weekly show on that streaming service app? Because that could be a platform. That's a big platform. HBO is like the uh, best premium network when it comes to premium channels, right? Um, and ROH being on there on the streaming service app would be a good look for them. And AEW just has way too many guys on their roster. And with ROH being an addition uh, to to the um, to the company, is like you know, uh, is way too many, way too many uh, talent on their roster. Uh, definitely not enough to book for uh, Dynamite and Rampage. I see not even for Dark. Like Dark don't even really get attention like that. Like that's just like their YouTube show. And it's just like, you know, it's like their main event or superstars. Like, it's like, you know, it, it's it's there for those guys that didn't make it on Rampage and Dynamite. And some of the top guys be on Dark, like Idolo, Keith Lee, Swerve. Um, you have Allen on there. You have all these guys that don't get uh, TV time being on that, on that Dark show over there on YouTube. Now, if ROH... Goes on HBO. It, I don't know if Tony why why Tony Khan was signed uh, with uh, HBO. Um, if if he not go uh, add ROH to 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 that, like I don't see why because you know AEW's already on TNT and TBS. For those of y'all that have HBO Max, y'all could tell me if y'all could watch AEW programming's on there. Um, and you have all these titles. I don't know. I guess they're trying to figure things out on how they're going to want to book ROH. But how y'all see ROH coming into play uh, under Tony Khan? Do y'all see uh, ROH becoming a a, a uh, promotion like the AEW has become? Um, will it get more recognition like AEW is getting? Or did, did he buy ROH for for its uh, rights, like you know, for 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 the catalog that ROH has? Y'all, let me know. And how would y'all, you know, book? You know, y'all could do a little fantasy book. And how would y'all book ROH if y'all was Tony Khan? Like, how would y'all want ROH to be uh, put out there uh, to to the public? And how would y'all? How do y'all feel about the current state of the WWE and the future of the WWE? What y'all seeing it? Like, how would y'all book it? You know. Do a fantasy booking on that, and I want to hear y'all opinions on the current state of WWE as well, and and how y'all see the future of the WWE, and what y'all thoughts on. You know, I think everybody could agree on that. You know, other than you know hardcore legional AEW fans, but you know, I think AEW is way too stacked with uh, talent right now. They don't know what they're doing other than their main storylines. Um, they they gotta you know tighten up when it comes to that. And they got to have shows like they got to, you know, do their mathematics right. They got to, you know, you know, divide all their talent to be displayed on each important show. They could, you know, add a little more relevancy. I, I think they doing what they could with Rampage, so I ain't going to knock that. But they going, you know, implement ROH as their third brand. I think they should shift over their talent that's not getting displayed like that, like they should over there on ROH. And HBO is a... Uh, a great platform to you know be on. You could have guys like the Death Triangle, Pac, Penta, Phoenix, uh, the House of Black, Malachi Black, Buddy Murphy, Brody King, um, Keith Lee, Swerve, Swerve Strickland, um, and all these guys. You know, guys that are not getting displayed, like you know, um, the Blonde Varsity. Um, you know, you have um, Lee Johnson and Brock Anderson, uh, the Acclaim. The Gun Club, all these guys, you know, you have, um, um, what's his name, the former Pure Champion, Josh Woods, and uh, Wheeler, U now Wheeler Yuta, he's getting booked, right, because he's with uh, uh, Blackpool Combat Club, so I can't say that, Jay Lethal, uh, Satnam Singh, uh, those guys are getting, you know, more TV time, because, you know, they're in the field with Samoa Joe, who is, you know, their a recent acquisition. Then you have Brian Cage, who's you know under a uh, Tolly Blanchard, because Tolly Blanchard, the pinnacle is split now. You know FTR is doing their own thing. Only uh, it's only uh, MJF and uh, um, Sean Spears uh, that are left from the pinnacle. And Tolly Blanchard, he he has uh, Brian Cage uh, uh, 
as as his client, you know, that he was a part of Team Taz. He was on AEW before, but he hasn't been on AEW TV for I don't know how long because, you know, I ain't gonna lie. Like, I say, like, I say, like, last year is when I, you know, tapped back, like, tapped into AEW fully. Like, you know, like I said, I've been tapped out of the uh, of the business, tapped out of pro wrestling for, for, for a minute now. And when AEW came around, like, when it first made its, uh, you know, debut to the wrestling world, like, I wasn't really, you know, paying attention to wrestling like that. But, you know, I've you know I, I, I seen some of the clips, but now I'm, you know, starting to, you know, tap back into wrestling, and that's why, you know, I'm talking about it. Um, but, yeah, uh, ROH can use some of the talent, like Idolo and guys like that that are not, you know, getting, you know, uh, the proper booking and proper airtime that they deserve. Yeah. Um, anyways, man, that does it for the first ever episode of Talk Wrestling. Uh, comment, subscribe, share, like, all that good stuff. Y'all stay healthy, stay safe. And I'm out of here, y'all. Peace.